Hey everybody, welcome to this intro video. So today we're going to be doing uh, just basically a episode zero for our new factorial series, talking about the mods we're going to be using and uh, introducing you into the space exploration, which is going to be a lot of fun. So space exploration, man. So I've been playing uh, Dyson Sphere program and I was like, I wonder if there's any kind of space mods uh, available to uh, factorial because a long time ago factorial had it announced uh, they were potentially doing um, a space addition to the game. They showed a platform image, things like that. Mostly concept, but uh, it never actually happened. But uh, uh, they did add the surfaces and the ability to kind of you know make a universe if one chose to. So uh, the dev who made this mod actually did just that. And now he actually works for the company as well. And he's going to still continue working on this mod and adding new features in the near future. But uh, basically, you got a game progression. So mo most of the early game is basically the same they've they've added some little twists and turns here because this mod requires like aai uh, so you know you know you got some motors and glass and sand and things like that but uh, overall your your early game and mid game even is pretty much about the same and then it's when you get to rockets things kind of change quite a bit but uh anyways there's over uh 600 uh places to visit so planets moons stars asteroids fields and more each location has its own resource and bias so they're showing you like a size example. I think the planet we start on is around about 6,000 or so dynamar. Uh, but you got smaller, bigger ones, things like that, which is pretty cool. And they all look different as well, which I like. It looks like they do like kind of a, a certain bio theme for each one of them. Uh, you actually have an in-game. This is in-game, but you have an, a solar system map. So it'll show you different things like your solar power uh, on it. So like, you know, how good is the solar on it? Um, you know, what's in the orbit. So you can see like in orbit here, it says 530. So you got a lot of solar power there. Uh, it even tells you how many spaceships are anchored, things like that, how bad the biters is, what resources are there. Uh, then you can see like through the, the whole solar system, which is really, really cool. So the solar system map is there. And then you have an interstellar map. Uh, so that's really cool. So uh, stars have massive solar power multipliers with uh, the right tech. You can even beam energy from the power uh, for power or as a weapon. Plants, moon can have re uh, resources not found on your home world. Each can also have uh, a support core miner. So they have a, a we'll show you below, but uh, a core miner that you can put on planets. Plants and moons orbits have low resources, but are uh, uh, position to have uh, con constant solar so basically in the sense that you'll always have uh, light up there so um, you'll always be able to uh, power whatever you have up there with solar basically I think the idea is if you're in space you'll use a lot of solar uh, Astrobytes will have abundance of resources but only extend in one direction that's kind of cool uh, so big, just big long you know asteroid belt that goes from one direction to another deep space asteroid fields have unique resources but almost no light that sounds actually really cool too. Um, and then uh, you got your satellite mode here. Launching navigation satellites unlock new navigation uh, satellite uplinks. Allows you to look around from the satellite's point of view. Detached from your character, you can look at any planet you have discovered and scout the surface. So that's really cool. Here's some of the special resources you can also find uh, from space and other planets and things like that. So that's really cool. Here's the core miner. So it, it offers unlimited resources, but basically you're also limited to the amount you can mine at a time. So the idea is you want to expand these on multiple planets instead. But shipping resources cost a lot, and eventually you got to unlock better technologies to move those. Uh, they're going to even add more content like a space elevator in the future, things like that. And here's the uh, update and change space science, which I thought was really cool. So you basically have your regular space science here, or space science, regular science that you do. And then when you get up to the rocket level, things have changed. Uh, so uh, I believe a lot of this has to actually be done in uh, space itself. But uh, you, you actually have like specialization so you can go in, you know, to one of these four or all four of them. And then eventually once you've gone through all four of those, you go into deep space uh, science, which uh, gets you into antimatter, space warping, teleportation, factory spaceships and end game tech. So you can actually make a factory spaceship later on. So like a big factory that goes there so you can go to destination to destination and just have your factory all on board on this ship. 
Uh, you got lots of space structures here. So there's a lot. And obviously it says not complete. You know, they're just showing you some of the cool images and stuff. It's just like a, it's like a brochure, right? Just showing you a few of these structures. But um, a lot of items can't be made on the planets themselves. So they, they require actual special conditions themselves, which is really cool. And uh, I like that. Look how big that is. That's Think about that. That's huge when you think about that. <laughs> Um, very cool looking here. So these are the uh, stromic uh, structures here. You got even new kind of energy structures. You got a particle collider, laser facility, electromagnetics facility. Uh, you even have biological structures. So genetic facilities, biochemical, uh, even a zero G growth facility. How cool is that? Uh, super computing and cooler uh, cooling. So you got hypercooler, you got thermal rea radiator and super computer here, which is really cool. Uh, you got space stations, so you can you know obviously build and live in space. So this is an example of you know somebody building in space here. Uh, this is like a little asteroid here somebody lives on. Um, that's really cool. You got orbital space stations here, so they're showing you like I guess somebody building this. You actually have to have something called scaffolding, which gets pretty expensive. So a lot of people will probably build more like this rather than say something that has scaffolding all scattered around. But uh, somebody even did those. I think they call those city blocks. So somebody actually did a scaffolding city block in space, which that's pretty intense. Uh, asteroid field space stations. This will probably be a little cheaper because living in the asteroid field means you can actually build on the asteroid fields themselves, right? So, uh, but it looks really cool, you know. They got their train system going through and everything. You got spacewalking and life support. You got the cargo rocket. So these ones here, you actually uh, send up cargo and fly up there. Um, and then you can land them eventually when you make it to a planet. You can build uh, a pad there so that way the rocket can actually land there. Uh, I guess this is your first stages too, so that's kind of cool. You come up there with your, your, you know, your first stages that I guess at some point dis detach, and then you come down in your little, uh, your little pod there. There is showing it in actual in space, and then the huge thing that really changes things is spaceships itself. So spaceships themselves here, rocket powered spaceship, antimatter powered spaceship, build your own spaceship block by block. Spaceships are built like compact factories with additional constraints: hull integrity stresses, hull containment, size and shape, engine placement, fuel storage and routing, power generation and storage, cargo storage. Uh, Anti-asteroid systems, control systems, docking and automation, technology unlocks better ships systems and allow for construction of much larger ships. So that's really cool. New victory conditions. So build a large spaceship and power space warping device on it. You can get to the required speed in interstellar space and hold it for six sec 60 seconds. You win the game. But basically that's like... The, the most end game ship you've basically unlocked and done everything at that point you got the delivery cannon so it can fire disposable capsules filled with uh, a stack of basic resources to most places within a solar system so that's pretty cool the package must be caught and safely uh in a delivery cannon chest otherwise the capsule hits the ground with a lot of force and will spill any surviving contents uh, you got the weapon delivery, so you can use different am ammunitions like uh, atomic bomb, iridium uh, pile driver, plague rocket. The plague rocket will actually like destroy everything um, on the planet, which is really cool. Uh, you got energy beams, so from solar orbit, space station, or anywhere with abundant power. So you can actually collect this energy and beam it around, and you can even use it as a weapon if you like, or use it as an actual. Uh, uh, collection like they have to a spaceship or deep space or low solar so they're actually using this to collect power from afar i guess that's really cool uh you got the coronal mass ejection so this is what happens starts burning up your planet you start out like that and then they happen every like 30 40 hours you get the universal explorer so this is not like the maps you had this is basically like a uh, another gui in the game which basically just shows you all the different places that you've explored information you can search through them filters you can even set priorities to them things like that um, dynamic information integration. They got this really nice information panel, so you can go through that, look at different information, and it's just a, like a really nice, like a uh, little dynamic guidebook, basically giving you information. Uh, you got beacons, so uh, beacons are more powerful, but the ma machines can only be affected by one beacon. Otherwise, they get overloaded and stop working. So uh, basically, they have really badass beacons, but they've also nerfed the idea of you know having a hundred beacons placed down, which oddly enough, I like that idea because 
literally all people do is have a factory and all they have is like a million beacons placed on the ground. It's like, eh, it's a little overdone, but you could build the most expensive wide area beacon too here, for example, that has a 32 by 32 area and has 20 module slots. So it has a lot of kick for it, but at the same time, it's not, oh, let's place like a hundred of these down in one spot. You know what I mean? So I like that idea. Uh, basic beacons now have eight module slots and the normal uh, nine by nine wide area of 15 and then the wide area beacon two have 20 so that's pretty cool and both are 32 by 32 um there's better modules as well so there's nine module tiers <laughs> productivity uh the only space structure that can use productivity modules are labs and miners so uh, you can use them in other things on surfaces but uh only labs and miners themselves in space can use productivity uh, you got recycling machines you got solar flat solar panels uh, water uh, conservation, that's important. So you got to save your water as much as you can in space, obviously. Uh, you got antimatter stuff. You got pylons. The pylons sound pretty cool. Uh, fast replace, more usable build power grids. So yeah, that's a really cool uh, addition. Out on power poles, supercharger, long pipes. You got the shield projector here. So that's really cool. This is for your ship itself to protect it it's from asteroids and things like that. Uh, you got meteors, so meteors will crash down on the planet. You got even new personal weapons like the Tesla gun, the bio gun, the cryo gun. You can actually see it freeze, which is cool. Uh, biter capsules, so you can allow uh, you to deploy lab grown biters from capsules the same way you use combat robots. That'd be actually really cool. Like place down like 50 biters and go attack other biters. You get the plague rocket, med packs. Uh, so they, they've made health regen really slow in the pack and then basically use med packs to heal yourself. Uh, you can't eat fish or they'll hurt you as well, so keep that in mind. Respawn on death, so when you die, you'll uh, go to, I guess, a random uh, random launch pad or random spaceship or or the uh, your, your starting home, basically, uh, the respawn button. So if you get stuck and screwed, you can respawn back. Exploration investigation. So this one is a really cool one. Space exploration has a lot of exploration investigation focused content. A lot of it is a secret. You'll need to find your uh, find it for yourself. If you ever wanted a chance for your own personal Indiana Jones, Daniel Jackson investigation trail with no rails or signposting, this is your chance. So that's really cool. There's uh, these like like lost ruins and things like that. Obviously, these are spoilers from that. So. Some really cool stuff, and there's probably like a story and stuff like that on there. So that is that is the uh, the 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 main mod. It's an expansion pack, and the, like I said, the developer himself now works for Factorial, and he was hired like he was hired by them. But he said he's going to continue working on it. Uh, so here is the other mods with it. So uh, basically, he's a, also the same author of AAI. So you have your AI industries, your single transmissions. Um, you got AI containers and warehouse. I thought that'd be fun. This one you weren't forced, but I thought, why not? I've never used it, so let's add it. You got Afraid of a Dark. Literally, I added this so we didn't have super dark nights. Um at least with our light on and then that way you guys are able to uh, enjoy it as a let's play because it gets pretty dark for videos but i do like the dark but obviously it can get pretty bad uh you got the alien biomes mod which is required and obviously it's his mod as well adds all that i added this train painter mod it also comes with another mod basically a fluid uh, wagon color so depending on the material in it your train will change the colors based on that which i think is really cool uh, you got bullet trails here, so you can actually see the uh, the trails from your guns. You got the clean concrete mod here, which when you're placing it on the ground, it actually uh, makes it nice and clean looking instead of having like grass and debris showing through the concrete, making it ugly. You got the combat mechanics overhaul here. Um, mostly the, the, the big reason you want this is it prevent spitters from shooting through the walls but i think their health and some other things are adjusted so there's some things that are good but also some things are bad uh you got crafting priority this one was a cool one electro mentioned uh basically uh if you hit shift p for example and you just you know you have a bunch of things you're handcrafting this will kind of speed it up and uh, or not speed it up but like switch it so you can use the last thing on your queue and bring it to the front just make your life a little easier uh, i don't have this enabled i don't really use this you know this is good for multiplayer but not not really needed for single player as much uh, it's just a gui that gives you information it kind of breaks if you load it when you first create your world it kind of breaks and goes first and then makes the ui a bit weird so 
Um, you got the factory library here. That's just a library for something. You got flare stack. I added this one. This is a fun one where you can dispose of liquids and items and things like that. So sometimes in these mods, sometimes there's just a bunch of excess stuff. There's always ways to usually handle them. Uh, but it, flare stack is also a fun one too. Plus it creates pollution and all that. You know, it's just a fun little thing. There's a the fluid wagon color mask. You got the grappling hook. Uh, this was also a recommended one for his mod. Basically, uh, if you jump over, uh, you know, in spacing, you know, certain, you know, flying off, you can use your grappling hook and uh, get back to the station. Uh, his information mod, so um, that's the one with like the dynamic guide in the game. The jetpack is part of his mod too, um, and uh, actually lets you fly around and stuff, which is pretty cool. You got the modular inserters. This one was more important. He recommended this one. Uh, this is like important with satellites and stuff like that when you're looking at your planet and you can actually change and do certain things. Um, this will let you actually uh, be able to, I guess, insert modules into machines and stuff like that. I've never played with it, but it was obviously recommended. I added one called Recipe Book. This is pretty cool. This is basically like a, sort of an NEI. They, the other one was called uh, FNEI. Uh, I guess they were trying to do like Minecraft kind of thing, but it's a lookup of like the items in the game. And then you can look at like recipes and maybe how to do it and things like that. It's just like a nice UI. The reason I picked uh, Recipe Book was it's newer, fresher, but it also uses the new UI and stuff. So I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, I don't know what this is. Very, uh, this is his mod? Oh, yeah, this is required, I think. Very bullet heavy logistic, and the bot will crash. Oh, okay, so this is his mod. Basically, there are certain planets and things like that where your bots will actually crash and burn. And uh, so this is actually part of that mod. Uh, I guess it's just part of that. We have shortcuts here. I added this one. This is really cool. Uh, basically, the one reason I like this is, for example, our lamp here. Uh, we can turn it on and off. So, you know, I can enjoy viewing, you know, the nice darkness, whatever. You can turn on and off, you know, like certain equipment on your power armor and things like that. Uh, so I really like that. It's just, uh, it adds a bunch of little features like that. Just basically making it a little easier to turn things on and off if they don't have a function. And, uh, yeah, pretty cool. Uh, show you all chat and all forces. This is actually kind of useless for single player, but normally, uh, because like, if you play multiplayer, and I'll probably set up as a server for multiplayer, the idea is if you do slash S, um, you can do slash S and then say something if you're on one planet and they're on another. But if you don't do that, then they can't hear you. So the idea was that you can just uh, have this, and then no matter what you say in chat, everyone will get it at that point. And that's I thought that was a really cool one. Obviously, you have space exploration itself. You have the graphics for it. And then you have the post-processing post part of it. Um, we got a vehicle snap one. This is another one Electro uh, recommended. Basically, uh, vehicles will snap to the grid and uh, it makes it a little easier for your vehicle to kind of move around and stay in a certain line because sometimes you want to go in like a straight perfect line, but it's kind of all over the place. Well, this basically uh, lets you do that. Uh, there's the wall block splitters, which is funny because I thought that combat it might be part of the combat overhaul as well. But this uh, prevents spitters from uh, passing the walls. Basically, the walls uh, basically stop them from spinning over there. And this is actually a newer mod, and this is a big deal because um, they, I guess, the meshing was recently uh, updated or something in Factorial, letting them do things like that. And then this is a simple mod. Basically, if you're holding, say, a stack of conveyor belts in your inventory, but you're kind of interested in how many you have total in your inventory without in your inventory or maybe hotbar or whatever uh, it just shows on the character itself how many of that item you have in total which is pretty useful information and uh, i thought yeah you know what that that would be some pretty good information to have and uh, help us with our journey so that, my friends, is the mods we have. We might add or remove little things here and there, but uh, basically we're not adding any overhauls or massive changes. There's a lot of people who also sometimes complement their pack with, uh, let me get the name of this one, with the, uh, where is it? Uh, it's the SE. Everyone uses it. Oh, wrong Discord here. Um, okay, too. Yes, the uh, Crastorio, too. Uh, there's quite a bit of people who use space exploration in that, but most people don't recommend that unless you've actually gone through space exploration, enjoyed it itself. That one, it just adds a lot more to it in a sense. It doesn't maybe make it hard. It just adds a lot of bloat. And I feel like our first time around, that's kind of cheap. You know, I didn't want to do that. So um, either way, um, yeah, that is that is what we're running. I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited for it. And uh 
yeah, I hope you guys and uh, girls enjoy this series and I hope you'll subscribe and uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy episode one. Thanks so much for watching and uh, have a wonderful day. Goodbye.